What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is one that has been, I think, anticipated by a lot, maybe, hopefully, and that is my new pedal board build that I, I guess, teased a couple videos ago. It was supposed to be done maybe like a couple weeks ago, but there's some delays, but now it's finally done, and let's check it out. So I guess before we dive into the actual pedal board, let's answer the question, why was it built and what's the purpose of it? So the main purpose of this pedal board is to be always next to my desk in front of my guitar rack like it is right now. Um, since I'm doing a lot of Zoom and Skype lessons these days, I wanted a board that can cover a lot of territory, yet be super simple and super easy to use, uh, which is how I came about this pedal board. So pedals, let's check it out. First off, we have above the tuner, we have a interface box. This allows me to run four cable method with delay and reverb in the loop of the amp, or if I plug into the return, everything can run into the front of the amp. So if I use my ODS, I can run delay and reverb in the loop of that, and then just have my overdrive, boost, and modulation in the front. Whereas when I use my Howard Deluxe almost daily for Zoom and Skype through the aux, everything runs in the front of the amp because it's a clean platform. From there, it goes into the TC poly tune with the bona fide buffer that is on. When I first got it, I had it off and I wasn't really a big fan of buffers, but when I plugged everything in, there was some signal loss, some high end loss, but the buffer engaged really helped that. Next up, it goes into maybe a controversial one, which is the uh, full tone super trim. And I'm using it like Bonamassa does with the uh, rate around one o'clock and the mix almost off, but I'm using it for the boost function. If you go inside it, there's an internal trim pod that can allow like a 15 or like 20 dB boost. So I have the boost on. So that runs into my overdrive pedal, which is the Vertex Ultraphonics, right? The Dumble style tone in a box. Originally, I wanted to put there the way huge overrated special, but since I predominantly use with this pedal board a clean platform, the overrated special still sounds great, but it excels more into an end that's already being broken up. And also, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of these Dumble tones, so a Dumble inspired pedal uh, pedal is pretty cool, and I think the Vertex Ultraphonics is a great one. From there, it runs into the way huge blue hippo for my chorus effect. I'm a huge Michael Landau fan. Some Robin Ford uses some chorus here and there. Bonamassa with his pain saver royale uses the blue hippo on the one side. I think it's a great atmosphere thing to have and also adds some texture, some cool lines and some rhythm playing. From there, it goes into two amp on the interface box. No. And then from out of the interface box, it goes back in to the Strymon timeline for my delay, which I have about eight delays programmed right now. Everything from a slapback to a Robin Ford type one in the duck setting, the 2290 setting. Uh, I have my Andy Timmons type really cool one and some pretty slapbacks. Uh, and it's also predominantly used as the looper. So when I'm on Zoom and Skype, I can show an example by looping it on the pedal board on the timeline and it works out perfect. Next up, we have the amazing uh, TC Electronic Hall of Fame Mini Reverb. Now, I posted on Instagram this pedal board and everyone's asking me, why did I use the Strymon Flint? Well, it's pretty simple. There was no room in the pedal board. <laughs> um, so the Hall of Fame Mini it has currently a Robin Ford preset. I think it's a like Spring Fever one. Um, pretty simple, nothing crazy. And everything is powered off the True Tone One Spot CS7 all solar cables, all Bestronic cables, the one that's equivalent to the Mogami 2314, and square plugs. Again, all soldered. I didn't want to do uh, solarless cables, though it did come across my mind because if I did solarless cables, uh, I could have done it faster uh, and probably easier. But I'm not a big fan of solarless cables, and solders are much more reliable, and there's overall the best. So that's what I went with. Um, a huge thanks have to be given out to Johnny from Cute Rigs. Um, he's a local builder here in, in Los Angeles area. Um, without whom the soldering would have been terrible. He saved my life last week and 
basically building it for me, starting all the cables, doing the power and everything. So a huge shout out and a huge thank you has to go to him because if not, this pedal board would not be done. So now let's check out some tones. Also, a uh, cool thing that John did for me was he soldered on for me a silent plug on my Mogami 2524 cable. I don't know why manufacturers don't provide silent plugs more often. These things are game changers. I mean, you unplug the guitar, no noise, right? This is simple, but extremely helpful and effective tool for the cables. Okay, let's take out some tones. Cool. So now let's check out some tones. As you can see, obviously, Les Paul into the pedal board, Harvard Deluxe, into the Aux, into Luna. So here is the clean tone, bridge pickup. <laughs> Great clean tone. If I do dig in, it breaks up. Amp is on, as they say, edge breakup. <laughs> so now let's check out the first pedal, which is a real tone shaper and everything, basically. Ultraphonics by Vertex, which is our dumble tone in a box. Let's check it out. Here's bridge pickup clean. Awesome. Here's the neck pickup with that same tone. <laughs> Go to the middle pickup and you could sort of do like inside story Robin Ford's type top. Next up, let's check out the Super Trim with the same pedal on so you can really hear how that boost impacts the ultraphonics. So no boost with the boost. No boost. with boost. So it's almost like hitting the bypass switch on the ODS amp. The boost in the Super Trim just kicks it into more overdrive. As you can see, I mean, check it out. Here is no boost. With boost. More better. <laughs> Back to our clean tone.
Chorus. the chorus super subtle but great at some atmospheric stuff delay here is one of my settings which is the fast which if you pair with the ultraphonics gets you pretty in that robin ford territory so here's with no overdrive <laughs> right pretty basic slapback with overdrive so it's pretty subtle here is another one of my delay settings which is going for like that 2290 type thing, the ducking delay. So here it is. because it doesn't get in the way of your playing. So when you're playing, it goes away. When you stop playing, the delay creeps back up, which is awesome. And last but not least, the little baby of them all, the TC Hall of Fame. So here it is, just amp reverb. of fame i think the robin ford preset <laughs> makes it a little bigger with the ultraphonics doesn't get mushy still keeps its clarity but there's a nice pillow to fall back on when you're not playing that good <laughs> That same type sound, you can do some Bonamassa's type tones. <laughs> so 
So that is the pedal board in all of its tones. It's incredible. I mean, this board was in the making, I guess, for maybe about like a couple months now. Um, but it finally came together last week. Again, huge thank you to Johnny from Cute Rigs here in Los Angeles to help me build the pedal board and helping it come to fruition and not just pedals on a board, but it's actually functioning pedal board. Um, so far, every pedal works great. The buffer on the TC Bonafide Tuner or the Polytune worked wonders in bringing back some of that high end that was lost. Um, and I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, maybe in the next video, we'll run it for a cable method into the ODS uh, and see how that sounds. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.